Hi guys, Olive here. Today I am here to do a review of The Patriots by Sana Krasikov. Since I read an advanced reader copy of this book, I'll put the finished cover right here. This is a book that was just published last month in January of 2017 here in the United States. It was published by Spiegel and Growl, which is an imprint of Random House, and my art copy had 542 pages. This is a debut novel by Sana Krasikov, who was born in Ukraine and was raised in the Soviet Republic of Georgia. It is a very ambitious, and sweeping first novel that tells the story of Florence Fane, a Jewish American girl who decides to uproot her life in Brooklyn to start a new one in the Soviet Union. Her reasons to move to the Soviet Union are twofold. It's the 1930s in Brooklyn, and at the time, the Soviet Union is very much being pitched to the outside world as a land of promise, the start of a new world order. Florence is extremely taken in by this idea. She's a young intellectual girl. She believes that there might be more for her there. Florence is also motivated to move to the Soviet Union because while still living in the United States and working in the United States, she meets and falls in love with a Soviet man. So Florence is looking to start her life over and she's looking for this man that she fell in love with. She tries to acclimate herself to the Soviet lifestyle. She tries to blend in. She tries to perfect her Russian, but she is always, of course, feeling like an outsider. This book has dual narratives. We are following Florence in her travels to the Soviet Union and starting her life anew. And then many years later, starting in the mid 2000s, we're also hearing from her son. It's a very interesting mirror image that is painted in this book with the mother and son. While Florence moves to the Soviet Union, her son flees the Soviet Union in the 1970s. We're seeing Florence's son, Julian, travel back to Moscow after many years of not stepping foot into Russia to help out his son, who is trying to make a life for himself in Moscow in the new Russia. At the very, very beginning of the novel, we find out that Florence, for some reason, was sentenced to hard labor at the Gulag. While she was there, her son Julian was in an orphanage. It is very clear at the beginning of the book that Julian does not know what exactly transpired in his mother's life to land her in the Gulag. He does start hearing some rumors that maybe he doesn't know the full story about his mother. He's also hearing that the archives have once again opened up and people are able to go through them and find out their family's histories. So his trip to Moscow has two purposes. He's trying to bring his son, Lenny, back home with him because he feels like Russia is not the right place for him. And he's also interested in going into the archives and trying to find out something, anything about his mother. Julian also has business dealings in Russia. He is involved in the oil industry. He is an engineer. So there is a very strong element in this book of the business dealings in the new Russia and how things work in the new Russia. I really enjoyed this novel. I think the most interesting element of it was the cyclical nature of the family relationships in that Florence leaves the United States and kind of bucks against that system because she's looking for something more. And then in turn, her son fights the Soviet system, is desperate to get out and go back to the United States, only to see his son make the exact same journey that his mother did. There are very interesting parallels between Julian's son, Lenny, and his mother, Florence, in their complete inability to look out for themselves in the very chaotic world that is Russia. There's a certain naivete about both of them, but also a goodness to them and a longing to want to be something. It was also extremely fascinating because the majority of Florence's narrative takes place during the Stalinist era. So you get to see the ways in which she and those close to her become cogs in the Stalinist oppressive system. If we're talking about the historical elements that are represented in the book, Stalin's Great Purges absolutely have an impact on the story. I found that the terror and confusion and desperation of that time period really sings through in terms of Florence's mindset. But it does raise some very interesting questions about how guilty are you when you're trying to look out for your own survival? Morally speaking, what is acceptable behavior and what is not acceptable behavior when your survival is on the line? You could also definitely see the parallels between the old Soviet system and the way the new Russia works and that some things change, but 
sometimes the more they change, the more they stay the same. This is a very sweeping novel. It covers a very long period of time. And while I was impressed by the amount of historical events that were incorporated into the story, I did feel on a couple of occasions that very big, very significant historical events were kind of glazed over in order to propel the story forward. Something that definitely stuck out like a sore thumb was the fact that our characters weren't all that impacted by World War II. I also feel that at certain points the author could have gone a little bit farther, and it's hard exactly to say what I mean by that. I just feel like it was almost getting somewhere and not quite getting there. I thought the prose while very clean, concise, and effective, lacked a musicality to it that this story really needed. I ended up giving this book four stars. I thought it was a highly enjoyable experience. I know that books over 500 pages can be intimidating, but I do really think this one is worth a read. If you've read this book or are interested in picking it up, I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. You can also reach me a variety of places on social media, and the links to all of my profiles are in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.